The basic pathophysiology of mitral stenosis is that there is a thickened and stiff mitral valve leaflets due to which there is a decrease in the area of mitral valve orifice causing impaired left atrial emptying as well as decreased left ventricular filling. Now due to this thickened and stiff leaflet there will be a increase S1 intensity on auscultation and due to the same thickened and stiff leaflet blood flow will be slowed down causing an increased chance of bacterial attachment and then causing infective endocarditis. Now the decreased area of mitral valve orifice will cause forceful opening of the valves which can be heard on auscultation as an opening snap. Again due to the decreased area of mitral valve orifice there will be a turbulent flow during ventricular diastole which may be heard as a mid diastolic rumble or mid diastolic murmur. Now the impaired left atrial emptying has many consequences. Number one, due to the left atrial enlargement, there may be compression of the surrounding structures like esophagus causing dysphagia and then the compression of recurrent laryngeal nerve may also cause hoarseness of voice and this left atrial enlargement will also cause stretching of atrial fibers which will ultimately produce atrial fibrillation. The increase in left atrial pressure will also cause pulmonary edema and then dyspnea, right ventricular hypertrophy, and then right side -right heart failure. The decrease in cardiac output due to decreased left ventricular filling may ultimately manifest as cardiogenic shock or congestive heart failure. Now, coming to the pregnancy-induced changes on mitral stenosis. Number one, moderate stenosis may become severe. Larger atrioventricular gradient develop, which increases progressively during the course of pregnancy. Third, increased heart rate of pregnancy decreases the diastolic filling time. This will aggravate the severity of mitral stenosis. There is increased incidence of complications such as pulmonary edema, atrial fibrillation, or paroxysmal atrial tachycardia. Just after delivery, there is increase in the preload following umbilical cord clamping. This may flood pulmonary circulation causing pulmonary edema. Now coming to the investigation, chest x-ray may show normal in early mitral stenosis. It should be avoided in the first trimester. In the later months, left atrium and right ventricular enlargement may be seen. Mitralization of left heart border may be evident. There may be evidence of pulmonary edema, calcified valve, and splaying of the carina. ECG will show P mitrali, where there is a broad P wave in V1. Also, there is a right axis deviation, right bundle branch block, and there may be signs of atrial fibrillation. Echocardiography or transesophageal echocardiography may detect left atrial thrombus, increase in left atrial size, pulmonary hypertension, measurement of mitral inflow velocity during early and late diastolic filling as well as estimation of transvalvular peak and mean gradient of mitral orifice area is possible. Left ventricular function, right ventricular function, the chamber sizes, estimation of pulmonary artery pressure, etc. are possible. It is also important to do serial vital capacity testing and then alter monitoring. Cardiac catheterization may also be done to measure capillary wedge pressure which may be increased to 25 to 30 millimeter of mercury when mitral valve area is equal to or less than 2 cm square. The anesthetic goals would be number one to maintain sinus rhythm, number two to prevent rapid ventricular rate, the joxin therapy should be started prior to pregnancy and it should be continued to maintain ventricular rate less than 110 beats per minute. Atrial fibrillation with fast ventricular rate will decrease the cardiac output and cause pulmonary edema. We should also avoid the precipitating events of sinus tachycardia such as pain, light GA, hypercapnia and acidosis. We should try to minimize increase in central blood volume because increase in the central blood volume will precipitate right ventricular failure and cause pulmonary edema.